Okay then, with the, uh, with the airbox removed, we can see these inlets, these are rubber, and these go from, obviously, from the airbox into the carburetor. And as you can see inside, they're absolutely fragged. There's like bits coming off and all sorts of stuff, and that is only gonna end up inside the carbs. So I think they're done. And I do have brand new replacements, so we're good there. So um, the, whole, the whole of this airbox is basically, uh, basically for the scrap because I'm replacing everything with a, with a brand new one, which we saw earlier on. From the carburetors into the cylinder head, these rubbers, as you can see, are quite perished and they're very, very cracked. And it's only a matter of time before um, they start leaking in air. And obviously that'll be air that hasn't gone through the carburetor and mixed with, uh, mixed with fuel. So the bike will run, uh, will run lean. So again, got brand new ones of those as well. So we're um, uh, well on our way to uh, getting this bike back to good running order and hopefully um, able to give uh, a good few more years reliable service. Okay then, carburetors themselves then, as you can see, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty stinking, got fuel leaking out of them, so uh, I'll drain that off in a minute. Um, but yeah, these are absolutely filthy, um, and these are going to massively benefit from, uh, from a good, uh, a good strip and a clean. Now, um, what I've done is I've, I've picked up a carb rebuild kit, so we'll get, we'll dig into that later on. But what I need to do first is strip them down. Once I've stripped them down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bang all the parts into uh, my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I've not actually used an ultrasonic cleaner before. This is actually brand new, although I have had it for quite some time. It was a gift from some uh, from some work colleagues. Um, so I've had it sat here for a, for a little while, ready for this exact kind of job. So we're going to give that a little bash and uh, see how we get on. What I did was I've... Um, Filled it with um, some detergent and um, deionized water as per the recommendations I received on um, several uh, of the Facebook groups I, um, that I frequent. And um, hopefully that'll, uh, that'll, that'll be a good, a good uh, starter before we actually even um, turn it on to give the ultrasonic action um, its chance to do its thing. So hopefully, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good result out of these carburetors. So let's... Um, Let's uh, have, a, in fact what I'll do, I will show you first the, the detergent that I've actually used and if you want to use it, then you can. As I said before, it's been, it was recommended to me by loads and loads of people that have used these countless times, so uh, I expect um, good things. So let me go and grab it and I'll show you what it is. Okay, here, here's, the, uh, here's the cleaner I've got. It's called Ubic 2000 and it's just an industrial cleaner. Uh, apparently it dissolves and floats away grime um, and it's used in all sorts of things. It's used in abattoirs, confectioners, uh, meat process and all kinds of things, but yeah, loads and loads of people suggested that this was the the stuff to use for the ultrasonic cleaner. So I'll um, I'll give it a bash. What I'll do if you if you want to grab some of this, um, I'll, I'll stick a link in the uh, in the description below, and you can pick some up and give it a go yourself and see how you get on. It wasn't um, it wasn't particularly cheap, but not what I would consider particularly expensive either. But um, obviously, if you want to if you want to grab some yourself, then by all means do so. Right then, let's um, let's tear into these carburetors. Okay then, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the fuel feed hoses because they're just in the way and they'll just pop off, well they should just pop off, there we go, move them to one side, right, this is a vacuum takeoff, leave that to one side, right, that is not, uh, that is not standard, it should be a cap like that. Um, someone's obviously just taken a bit of hose with a bolt and stuck that over the top. Um, it's probably doing what it's supposed to do, but I'll see if I can find another one of these when we uh, come to reassembly. All right then, now we've got all the uh, all the pipe work out of the way, what we need to do first, take the cap off. Under here, we'll find a diaphragm. Uh, a spring and the uh, the slide. So what we need to do is just undo these two screws. These are 
probably going to be quite tight, they've probably not come out ever. Um, so a good fitting screwdriver is going to be, uh, there we go, going to be of benefit here. One thing I will say already is that one there is going to be a bugger to get out. It looks like someone's already had a go at that one. So what I'll probably have to do is maybe uh, cut a slot in the top and, uh, and uh, use a bit of brute force and ignorance to get it off. There we go. Right. Take these screws out. And take the cap off. There's the cap and its spring. And the diaphragm just pulls out of this little groove. And the slide comes out. It's, it's a bit of resistance there, but that's because it's covered in all this rubbish. So it's um, been a bit of a bugger to come through, but gently work it out. And there we go. Okay, and there we've got the needle. Now the needle will come up the middle, if I push it up, you see this little plastic spacer on the top. And there we go, there's the needle. Now this um this little circlip here, as you can see, there's several little several little um, notches that it could fit into, depending upon what notch you put it into, depend um, oh, it was the fuel rate. So um, it's worth bearing in mind and, and checking where it's actually fitted. It's actually fitted on the second one from the bottom. And that little spacer sits on top of the Okay, let's pop that to one side. Along with the uh, diaphragm, there's a, a little O-ring here. There we go. There'll be a new one of those in the rebuild kit. Uh, right then, let's move on to the next stage. Okay, what I was going to do was I was just going to whip these two apart um, to the same stage, but what I'll do, I'll run through one carburetor and then I'll come back and recover the other two to the same stage um, at the end, because you don't need to see me go through all three. Um, we'll just go through one because they're all the same. Right, next, what we're going to do, turn it upside down and we're going to have a look at the float bowl. On the float bowl, what we've got here, you can see this little screw, and there's a little hole just there. This little screw is basically the drain for the it's, a, it's the drain for the float bowl. So when you lay your bike up, what you should do is unscrew that, let all the fuel out of the float bowl, so it's not sitting in there gumming up. Because what fuel does um, as it ages? It goes stale and leaves like a horrible varnish over everything. And that varnish is what causes rough running in carburetors, um, along with the fact that the fuel's got no octane to it. So, yeah, um, if you're leaving your bike over winter or whatever, just drain them out. Some, some don't have these little screws. Some have like a little bolt at the bottom with a ceiling washer. Just drop the bolt out, let the fuel out, put the bolt back in. Job's good in. Um, yeah, anyway, so to get the, uh, the float bowl off, what we need to do is... Undo these two. These two are tighter than the ones on the top. I will say that. Oh, I'm going to have to lean on this. Yeah. I didn't want to come out without a fight. Right, there is actually new screws in the rebuild kit, which is uh, quite handy. Because um, some of these, with, with how tight they are, may well strip. Right. There we go. And then pull the float ball off. Now, it's, oh, I've seen a lot worse. This is actually not terrible. Not terrible at all. There's a little bit of discoloration in here. Um, yeah, a little bit of discoloration, but nothing too dramatic, and nothing that won't clean off. Um, around here, there is a seal. There it is. Pull that off, because that's now rubbish. Discard that. And there, there we are, The uh, that's the bowl, so we can stick that to one side. And what we have next is the float. Now, the purpose of the float is to um, stop the flow of fuel. 
um, into the float bowl from from the uh, from the tank effectively. If you look just let me get the screwdriver just here, just there. There's a little little. It looks like a little piston going up and down as I move the float. So basically, fuel comes in um, when there's no fuel in the bowl. It will effectively be like that. As fuel comes in, you can see that this piston's down. As fuel comes in, um, it comes in through this inlet, and as it fills up the bowl, this float gets higher and higher and higher and higher and higher, to a point where it closes. That little piston there closes into its recess, and what it's done there now is stop the flow of fuel into the float into the float bowl. As the fuel gets used. Um, obviously the fuel level goes down, the float comes down ever so slightly and lets more in and that's basically the way it works. Um, yeah, so um, obviously the, the, the height of that float needs to be set correctly. If it's not set correctly you're either flooding the bike or starving it of fuel, one or the other. So it needs to be, it needs to be, pretty, it needs to be pretty accurate. So what I need to do is just pull this off. There's nothing holding it in other than these two o-rings which i'm also going to take off because we've got new ones in the kit taking care not to damage anything this this float assembly is actually incredibly delicate it even feels delicate in the hand so be very careful with it there's one And there's two. Right on these um, on these particular carbs, the uh, the float needle is actually not um, removable from the float. As you can see, it's moulded in um, onto the actual float. So if this is um, if, if this is damaged in any way, you have to replace the whole thing. Um, but it's available from uh, from from the dealer. As, a, as an entire assembly. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the jets. Right then, now we've uh, now I've got the float removed. What we need to do next is remove the uh, remove the main jet. Now, what we want to do is make sure we've got a decent screwdriver for this because you don't want to mar this up because obviously it'll fake the fuel in. Cracker off, <sighs> like so. And just remove her. Right. What we need need to do next is we need to remove the needle jet which sits down inside there. You can see the screw threads on the end. Um, that's what we need to remove. Now, what I'm going to do is fit one of the screws from the body and give it a light tap, like so. And as you can see, it's popped out. What you don't want to do is get a screwdriver down inside and jam it in because um, all you'll do is you damage the threads, uh, and then you won't be able to fit your your uh, your main jet back in. So that's the way I like to do it. I'm sure other people have got different methods, but it works for me. Right now, we can remove the needle jet. With it. Come on, there you come. There she comes. It's a bit awkward because you've got to get your fingers in. And there we go. And there we have it. And as you can see, you've got all your little, your little holes down the side which allow the uh, another fuel in and out and naturally as you can hopefully expect oops as this draws up it uncovers more of the holes allowing the fuel to be pulled into the airflow through the carp so there we are right let's get that back on there so we don't lose it Right, next thing we want to do is um, remove the uh, the slide block. Um, there we go. 
and that came out fairly easily and that is also absolutely bogging as well so let's um put that down to one side right next thing we need to do is have a look at the pilot jet before we move on to the pilot jet i do want to uh, discuss something very quickly because it's actually quite important um, on the side of the needle jet you can see there is a little flat just there and inside you probably won't be able to see it on the video but right at the top there's like a little peg that sticks out the side of the tube right near the threaded end and when that's reinstalled it has to be orientated so that that flat obviously goes over that peg um, if it's not then hammering it home will obviously damage something so that's um, obviously very very important and worth bearing in mind um, I, did, I did just want to mention that before we move on right then pilot screw that uh, sort of pilot jet should I say is uh, right down in there um, and what we want to do is um, obviously remove it and there it is right that is um, everything that we can physically remove from this carburetor right now so um, yeah what we need to do is uh, the same for the other two um, and then we can uh, we can get them into the uh, we can get them into the ultrasonic cleaner. So let me whip the other two apart, and then uh, I'll bring it back. Okay, what we've done is we've got all the uh, all the carburetors apart, and um, as you can see, I've got each one split down into their uh, respective. Um, carburetors so what I want to do is I want to keep them all separate because I don't want to mix them up because they do they do mate together over time so keeping them apart like this is, is good practice I'm not going to I'm not going to tear the uh, the body of the carbs apart because I'm just going to put that straight into the cleaner as it is it will, it will get into everywhere it needs to it doesn't need to be uh, pulled apart any further than this um, that'll be uh, that'll be perfectly fine right with the slides and the diaphragms the diaphragm is very very delicate However, they do come apart like so. I don't want these slides in the cleaner because they're bogging. So gently remove the diaphragms from each one. Being very, very careful not to tear them because they will tear very easily, especially if you've, uh, especially if you've got like long or sharp nails. And there we are. Right. I think what we do is um, we'll get everything in the uh, in the cleaner. What I've got here is I've got three jars, and inside each of these jars is um, some distilled water. Now, the cleaning action from a, from one of these is allegedly done by um, the bubbles it creates by its ultrasonic vibration. Um, what I've also got is some of these little tea strainers. Uh, that was another thing that was recommended to me by uh, the people that also recommended the. Um, the cleaning solution now um, they said you can use your little tea strainers and you can put your little jets in there and, and all that good stuff and it keeps them all together you know um, so I think that's an absolute genius idea I'm not going to take credit for that that was um, somebody else on one of the uh, one of the groups that told me about that um, but again somebody else also said that you can put all your uh, all your little gubbins like all of this into a jar just like so and um, Yep, all the, all the little screws can all go in there. The little jets, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop off the circlip. Obviously, I remember that it's on the second one. So let's pop that off. Drop that in. And the needle. And there we go. I can pop the lid back on that. And everything is in there. Now, as I said, it's the vibrations that do the cleaning. This will form little bubbles inside it in exactly the same way that um, it will form on anything else it doesn't have to be um, free floating inside the uh, inside the uh, inside the cleaner itself and another another good tip that somebody gave me was if you had if all you were cleaning was little bits like this you could actually drop the detergent into that and it would keep the rest of the fluid in your um, 
in your cleaner clean which is you know it's a bit of a no-brainer really and i hadn't thought of it again i'm not going to take credit for it it was somebody else's idea and it makes perfect sense so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the parts for each of the carburetors in the jars along with the screws just like that And there we go, and then they can just go straight into the cleaner like so, and then the body again can go in uh, like it is. Um, and then what that does is that keeps all the bits all together and um, um, ready to uh, ready to go back on once um, once they've uh, had the cleaning process done. Right, what I'm going to do is pop the lid off. We've got a little basket in here, and um, I'm going to pop the carburetors on the basket and as you can see a, a nice little uh, bank of three carbs sits incredibly nicely in this cleaner now what I want to do is top it up because I do want the um, I do want the uh, fluid to be over the cleaner because otherwise the part that's sticking out of the water won't get cleaned um, all of these can go in what I'll do them in like so bit of clean solution and there we go and then all the other parts can go in around I'm, I'm hoping for um, I'm hoping for good uh, results from this. Um, hopefully, uh, everything will be absolutely, you know, spotless when it comes out. Um. In fact, there's no point in putting the float in there because the float will just float. Um, and then the uh, the top covers can go in as well. And as you can see, it's now pretty full. Right. Um, in fact, I don't need to top it up because by the time I've put all the other stuff in there, the uh, the water level's actually risen. Okay. There we go. Right. Happy with that. I think what I'll do actually, I will also put in the idle adjuster. And here we are. Right, let's put the lid on. Turn her on. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, run it at ambient temperature. Now, a few people said that um, the, the, the heat cycle ab does absolutely nothing to the cleaning effect whatsoever. So what I'm going to do, I, um, I'm going to give it a go um, without any heat. I'll put it on for 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Um, I'll leave. Yeah, um, I won't turn the uh, I won't turn the heating element on at all, um, uh, and we'll see how it does. If 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 it needs um, a bit of heat once I you know once I look at it and it hasn't actually had that much of an effect, then I'll um, I can always do it again with a bit of heat. But for now, what I'll do, I'll um, turn it on without any heat. And then um, I'll come back in 30 minutes. So this is going to be absolutely noisy. Um, so I'll um, catch you all uh, momentarily by the power of YouTube. Obviously, this is, uh, is going to go really, really quickly for you guys. But I'll see you uh, shortly. Uh, 
Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. Gruesome. That water's pretty stinking. So, that, well, that can only be a good thing. You can see all the slime around the edge. Look at all of that. That's all come off of the uh, off of the part. So if it's around the edge of there and in the water, that means it's not on the parts. Okay, let's uh, pull everything out. As you can see, it's had the same effect on these as well. What I actually did was I ran it for 30 minutes and then thought, I've got time. Why not? Why not give it another 30 minutes? And this time I gave it a bit of heat. In 30 minutes, it managed to get up to 37 degrees. Um, so it didn't quite make it to the 50 that I set it to, but. Um, yeah, you can feel it's nice and warm. Anyway, let's um, pull all of these out. Oh, look at, look at that. That looks lovely. That's come out absolutely fantastic. And likewise with that one. One thing I will say, not so much on these. These have got a bit of bit of dirt around them, so I may uh, have to give them a bit of a touch up with some uh, with some cleaning cleaning cloth and maybe a little toothbrush. But uh, yeah, these have come out absolutely fantastic. Again, these there's still a little bit on them, um, so I'll give them a another once over. Carburetors themselves. Wow, the inside of them certainly looks awesome. The uh, the out around here, not so much. Um, I reckon they could probably go another, you know, give them another go. To be honest, and they'd probably come up even better. But from where we started, they look absolutely fantastic so far. Um, so yeah, I, might, I may even put them in again, or I could always get a toothbrush on them. And that, I think, is everything. Uh, just make sure nothing fell through. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's the little spring off the idle speed adjuster. That goes on. There. Yeah. So, as you can see, the uh, the effect is pretty good. Um, just need a little couple of little uh, once-overs with a few other bits, but I'm pretty impressed with the results. Right, then. Let me... Uh, let me clean up all of this stuff on the outside. I may run it through again, um, just for uh, just for good measure. Um, but uh, yeah, let me um, get these um, so that they're absolutely sparkling, and then we'll um, we'll have a look at the assembly.